This is a super high yield video on CNS abnormalities during embryological development. For a thorough understanding of CNS embryology, watch this video. This video will be focused on what can go wrong during embryological development of the central nervous system. Very important for USMLE embryology. Over here we have a dorsal view of a developing embryo. The anterior neuropore with the neural fold and the posterior neuropore, these squiggles being the somites, which will turn to muscle. Failure of the anterior neuropore to close cause an anencephaly and an encephalocele. Anencephaly is essentially no formation of the brain. And next issue, holoprosencephaly. That's when the prosencephalon which is the forebrain, fails to divide in the telencephalon and into the diencephalon. This condition is associated with Patau syndrome, which is a trisomy 13, Edwards syndrome, which is a trisomy of 18, of the chromosome 18, severe fetal alcohol syndrome. These three that I've just listed will be discussed in a future video. And holoprosencephaly is also associated with a cleft lip and palate, which is available on my channel. And moving further down the brain now, we have posterior fossa abnormalities. Dandy Walker syndrome, that's when you have a dilated or an enlarged fourth ventricle. You won't see any vermis on the cerebellum and the cerebellum would overall be smaller. The next syndrome is Arnold Chiari. Arnold Chiari 1 is less severe than Arnold Chiari 2. Arnold Chiari 1 occurs when the cerebellar tonsil herniates through the foramen magnum and it may present as chronic headaches in adulthood and associated with symptoms of ataxia. Arnold Chiari 2 is the same thing. The cerebellar tonsil again herniates into the foramen magnum due to a small posterior fossa and it's also associated with stenosis of the aqueduct and hydrocephaly. The signs and symptoms of Arnold Chiari 2 are associated by tonsillar herniation, compressing the medulla, and palsies of cranial nerves 9, 10, and 11. Based off that, you should be able to list all of the symptoms associated with any of those. Moving down to the spinal cord, paying attention at the posterior neuropore, just like the anterior neuropore would close for normal development, the posterior neuropore should also close to continue normal development. And failure of closure of the posterior neuropore can lead to spina bifida, meningocele, and myelomeningocele. I highly recommend that you watch my video on central nervous system embryology. This is to make sure that your understanding of normal embryology has a good foundation for further study. And this is available at drminas.com.